Greetings viewers and voyeurs, you're with Got That Funk. This video has been inspired by recent videos from healthy addicts and the peach called Insecurities. Now I'm sure it'll come as a great shock to all of you out there in YouTubia that when I was a kid, uh, everybody thought I was weird. I know, right? Shocking. Anyway, um, no, it's true. When I was about eight years old is when it all started. I, um, a lot of the kids in my school years used to tell me, Paul, you're really weird. You're really weird. And for the first five or six years that I was given that label, I was very resistant to it. But by the time high school rolled around, I think I had more or less embraced the term, uh, mostly as a way of disarming my critics. Um, you know, I didn't necessarily think I was weird, but I was trying to take the sting out of it. When people would say I'm weird, I'm like, yeah, I'm weird, so and what? You know, what else you got, you know? But the fact is, uh, they probably spotted something about my personality that I wasn't even personally aware of at that time. Um, the other thing is about my image uh, back in school. You know, I was a very, very, very scrawny boy um, uh, to the point where I looked unhealthy. I was basically a skeleton with skin on it. And uh, that was uh, part of what got me ostracized, I suppose, because I look really, really, really scrawny. And also, I've always had off-color, fucked-up teeth and so forth. Um, and I think that, plus the label of weird, uh, sort of meant that I didn't really fit into any of the cliques in school. You know, I, I, I never really fit into groups of people. I've always, my whole life, been, for the most part, a loner. And I'm, I've learned a long time ago to be comfortable with that. Because, um, you know, it seems to me you don't really have a choice. You, you either be yourself and are accepted or rejected on the basis of who you really are, um, or you fake and, okay, you might be accepted, but then you end up not liking yourself. And to me, that seems like a self-evidently worse option than just being yourself and taking the consequences for it. And I came to that realization before I even hit puberty, you know, it's like, but I wasn't necessarily comfortable with it. I really wanted people to like me. I've always wanted people to like me, but I've never been inclined to alter my behavior or my appearance in order to encourage or persuade people to like me. And uh, as I mentioned to Ashley in the comment section of her video, um, I think what really got me over the river as far as accepting myself on my own terms was being a parent. Um, I became a single parent when my kids were three and two years old, so I would have been 31 at that time. And, you know, when you see yourself through your children's eyes, which is inevitable when you're raising children up uh, from a very young age, um, your children look at you without the biases that society looks at you with. And they see the real you. They know who you are. Uh, the way you look is less relevant to them than how you behave. And um, to be blunt, the only people in the world for whom I would alter something about myself in order to gain their acceptance would be my children. Everybody else can swivel. And I think that is pretty much where my head's been at ever since. Um, as I said a moment ago, you know, I, I, I want people to like me. Of course I do. I get kind of irked when people say, oh, I don't give a shit if people don't like me. They, they can take me or leave me. Well, it's easy to say that when at least someone likes you. Um, but I, frankly, I think if literally no one liked you, you'd care. I know I care. I want people to like me. Of course I do. Uh, but I'm just not going to try to get you to like me by putting on some kind of an act. Um, anyway, so, so there's that. The other, the other thing I wanted to mention is, you know, these, these issues never really go away. Even though, um, as Music Genius Number 1 once pointed out in a comment section of one of my videos, even though I'm very comfortable in my own skin, comfortable with who I am, how I am, what I look like, etc., uh, I still have to deal with these peer pressure issues now, even in my 50s. Um, you know, I, I, when I was a body piercer for 14 years, um, I think people expected me to have a little bit of an alternative image, um, so people weren't necessarily surprised by it. Uh, now that I live in London 
and I don't do that kind of thing anymore. I work in construction, which is obviously a, a sort of man's man kind of um, profession. Um, I find it amusing how the men I work with, um, you know, they kind of like me, but they all universally think I'm weird, and uh, they just plain don't get me at all. Um, I'll tell you a true story about that. Uh, a couple of days ago, I posted this picture on my personal Facebook. One of my colleagues at work saw the picture that I had posted and it's like, Paul, why did you post that picture? It's really scary. And I said, it's not scary. What's scary about it? He goes, you look really scary in that picture. What's up with that? Why would you do that? And I said, it's just my face, man. You know? Um, he goes, yeah, but you're wearing makeup. Why would you do that? And I've got obviously a bit of eyeliner, as you can probably tell, in the corners of my eyes, which I've worn off and on throughout my adult life. And uh, obviously that picture was taken about five or six years ago, maybe seven even, and uh, I was working in the piercing studio in those days, and I was going out every Friday and Saturday night in those days, and it's probably a picture I took on the way out. But even if it's not, I would wear that sometimes when I went to work. And I said this to Dan, and uh, he's like, well, you wouldn't wear that to work now, would you? And I said, well, there's no real reason to accentuate my eyes for working in construction, you know. Um, and when I said accentuate my eyes, he looked at me as if I just took a shit in front of him, which is really funny. And he just cannot comprehend why I would do that, why I wear some of the clothes I wear. You know, I've got a lot of very loud, bright, colorful clothes. And... Um, you just don't get it, man. It's like, why would you do that? It's like, I'm just being myself. I'm sorry if you don't get it. I'm actually not sorry if you don't get it. I'm, I'm sorry that you don't get it. Um, because it just seems really weird to me how, you know, we're all born looking different. We're all born with a different heritage, with different experiences, and a different personality. So why is it that so many human beings expect everyone to homogenize? Why can't we celebrate our differences rather than criticize them? It's a question which has vexed me my entire life. And even though I'm advanced in years, uh, I have not gained enough wisdom to actually answer that question. Uh, the herd mentality is something that uh, kind of blows me away in the modern era. Um, but that is what I think it is. You know, I, I think there's this general assumption, uh, no matter how subconscious, that if you don't try to go along with the flock, uh, you're a threat to it. And, uh, you know, I, I, my attitude is live and let live. You know, I won't tell you how to live. Um, don't tell me how to live. We should get along just fine. Um, I wish it was that simple, but you know what? It doesn't really matter anyway, because I am who I am, and I quite like who I am. And as long as my kids like who I am, everything else, everybody else whose approval I get, well, that's very much appreciated. And anyone whose criticism I get, well, you know what? Uh, I didn't really need your approval anyway. <laughs> I don't need anyone's approval or permission for being myself, and neither do you.